The Power of Not Reacting, How to Control Your Emotions Written by Justice O. Malcolm Published by Audio Books Office Introduction Think about how much easier life would be if you could keep your cool under pressure. Envision yourself in high-pressure scenarios where you are able to keep your cool and respond rationally rather than acting on impulse. You are about to read The Power of Not Reacting, How to Control Your Emotions, a book that will teach you how to become emotionally intelligent, how to direct your reactions, and how to keep your head on straight in any situation. When you're angry or frustrated, do you ever say or do something you come to deeply regret? Everyone has. When we let our emotions control us, we could act rashly, which isn't always a good thing. Is it possible to alter it, though? Imagine for a second a world where you could control your reaction instead of just reacting without thinking. Acquiring that priceless talent is within your reach with the help of this book. Our journey begins by understanding the importance of emotional control. Emotions are a natural and vital part of being human but when they take the driver's seat, they can lead us astray. This book will help you recognize the triggers that spark emotional reactions and provide you with strategies to manage those emotions effectively. By gaining control over your reactions, you'll be able to handle challenges with grace and make decisions that reflect your true intentions. The first step is recognizing the difference between reacting and responding. Reacting is often a knee-jerk, automatic response driven by emotion, while responding involves thoughtful consideration and deliberate action. This book will teach you how to shift from reactive to responsive behavior by cultivating self-awareness and mindfulness. You'll learn how to pause in moments of stress, giving yourself the space to choose a response that aligns with your goals and values. We will now explore mindfulness in further detail. To maintain emotional regulation, one must practice mindfulness, which is paying attention in the here and now without letting one's thoughts and feelings take over. This book provides easy-to-implement mindfulness practices that you can use every day to become more self-aware and less reactive to your feelings. Being attentive can help you get the composure and perspective you need to face any obstacle head-on. An additional effective method for dealing with emotions is breathing exercises. The physiological response to stress is to tighten up and breathe more shallowly, which in turn makes you feel even more anxious. In order to help you respond thoughtfully, reduce stress, and relax your nervous system, this book will walk you through easy breathing exercises. The book also explores the importance of understanding the root causes of your emotional reactions. Often our most intense reactions are tied to unresolved issues or past experiences. By identifying these underlying triggers, you can address them directly, reducing their power over your emotions. This book provides exercises for uncovering and healing these emotional wounds, allowing you to respond more calmly and rationally in the future. The Power of Not Reacting provides stories of genuine people who have mastered the art of emotional regulation. Listening to their experiences will open your eyes to the value of emotional mastery and encourage you to put these lessons into practice in your own life. You'll find that your relationships, decision-making, and overall quality of life are all enhanced when you learn to control your emotions. The ability to manage your emotions is something you possess. So keep that in mind as you set out on this path. A life of calm, clarity, and meaning may be yours when you master the art of non-impulsive response. Welcome to the power of not reacting how to control your emotions. Let's embark on this life-altering adventure side by side and discover the power that comes from being in control of our emotions. Imagine being in control of your emotions not letting anger, frustration, or sadness dictate your responses. It's not just about suppressing emotions, but understanding them, regulating them, and using them wisely. You've probably been in situations where you reacted impulsively only to regret it later. But what if you could train yourself to respond rather than react, to stay calm despite the chaos around you? Here we will delve into a methodical approach to using non-reaction as a tool for emotional regulation, 
providing a fresh viewpoint on the subject. Are you prepared to go on this life-altering adventure? For more information about the ebook version of this audio, check the video description or visit audiobooksoffice.com. We notice that 69% of you who listen to our video are not yet subscribed to the channel. Please help support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and liking the video. Thanks for inspiring us to create more content for you. Chapter 1 Understanding Emotional Triggers Ever wondered why certain situations or comments instantly make you angry, sad, or anxious? You're not alone. These sudden emotional reactions are often caused by what are known as emotional triggers. Understanding these triggers is the first step towards gaining control over your reactions. Emotional triggers are basically events, conversations, or even people that spark intense, often overwhelming emotions within us. They're deeply personal and are often linked to past experiences or deeply ingrained beliefs about ourselves or the world around us. For example, if you were bullied in school, a colleague's offhand remark might trigger feelings of insecurity and fear. Or, if you've grown up feeling ignored, being overlooked in a conversation might trigger feelings of anger or resentment. However, it's important to remember that these emotions aren't necessarily a reflection of the present moment or reality. They're more like echoes of past experiences. Recognizing this can be incredibly freeing. It can help you understand that you're not reacting to the current situation, but rather to a memory or a fear. Understanding your emotional triggers isn't about placing blame on others. It's about gaining insight into your own emotional landscape. By becoming aware of what sets you off, you can start to take control of your reactions. You can begin to choose how you respond to your triggers, rather than being at their mercy. In the face of emotional triggers, vitally, you must understand your default response, as it often happens automatically and can cloud your ability to react thoughtfully. This response, ingrained in your behavior over time, is your go-to reaction when confronted with stressors or confrontations. It's that split-second decision you make, often without thinking, as a result of feeling emotional. It's essential to recognize that these default responses aren't inherently good or bad. They're simply your conditioned reactions, and they can be changed. However, to make a change, you first need to identify what they are. Are you quick to anger? Do you retreat into silence? Perhaps you become overly pleasing, or maybe you instantly deflect and blame others. The first step is to pinpoint your automatic reactions. To identify your default response, you'll need to do a bit of introspection. Reflect on past situations where your emotions were high. What was your immediate reaction? Did you raise your voice, withdraw, or burst into tears? Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. The goal is pure understanding. It's important not to judge yourself during this process. You're not a bad person for reacting the way you do. These responses have likely served you in some way, possibly as a protective measure. But by identifying them, you open the door to gaining more control over your emotional reactions in the future. It's a vital step in harnessing the power of not reacting. Chapter 2 Recognizing the Physiological Response As you plunge deeper into your emotional responses, you'll begin to notice the physical signs that accompany them providing further insight into this automatic process. These physiological responses may include an increased heart rate, shallow breathing, or even a sense of unease in your stomach. It's vital to understand that these physical reactions aren't just random occurrences, they're your body's way of signaling that something is stirring emotionally. Recognizing these bodily cues is like learning a new language, the language of self-awareness. It's not easy, but it's worth it. At first, you might struggle to differentiate between the physiological responses to different emotions. Don't despair, it's a process. Encourage yourself to stay patient and curious, 
because understanding your body's responses will arm you with the knowledge you need to manage your reactions better. This recognition phase isn't about judgment, it's about observation. As you become more familiar with your body's reactions, you'll develop a heightened sense of awareness that can be both enlightening and empowering. You'll start realizing that an accelerated heartbeat mightn't be just about fear, it could be excitement too. Or that lump in your stomach mightn't be about apprehension, it could be anticipation. Chapter 3. Creating a Pause Button Harnessing the power of a mental pause button can be your greatest ally in managing emotional reactions. This pause button isn't a physical entity, but a mental construct that you can create, modify, and use to your advantage. It's all about creating a momentary break in the chain of thoughts or emotions that might lead you to an instant, often unconsidered, reaction. Picture this pause button as a stop sign that pops up in your mind when you start feeling overwhelmed or reactive. It's your brain's cue to stop, take a moment, and reassess the situation. This might seem like a simple concept, but it's often easier said than done. Don't be disheartened if you find it challenging to pause as your emotions flare. It's a skill that takes time and practice to master. When you first start using your pause button, you may only manage to catch yourself after you've reacted. That's okay. The important thing is you're becoming more aware of your emotional responses and starting to question them. Over time, you'll get better at hitting pause before you react. Breathing techniques can help calm your mind and body, especially when you're on the verge of an emotional reaction. It's not magic, but science. Your breath is intimately connected to your nervous system, and by manipulating it, you can shift your emotional state. Let's explore a popular technique called the 478 breathing method. This technique involves inhaling for four seconds, holding it for seven seconds, and exhaling for eight seconds. By doing this, you're taking more oxygen in and stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system, which promotes a state of calmness. When you're in an emotionally charged state, your body goes into a fight or flight mode. Your breathing becomes shallow and fast, clouding your judgment. By consciously changing your breathing pattern, you're effectively reversing these physical reactions, giving you the chance to think clearly and respond rather than react impulsively. The more you practice these breathing techniques, the more natural they'll become. Eventually, you'll find yourself using them instinctively whenever you're in a challenging situation. So next time you feel the heat of anger or the sting of hurt, pause, breathe, and regain control. It's a small step, but a crucial one in the journey towards emotional mastery. These breathing techniques offer another layer of control over your emotions, and that's the power of not reacting. Chapter 4 Mindfulness in Everyday Life Incorporating mindfulness into your daily routine can profoundly transform the way you respond to life's ups and downs, making it a vital tool in your emotional control toolkit. It's not just about meditation or yoga, it's about being present in each moment and observing your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Consider, for example, when you're having a conversation. Are you genuinely listening or are you waiting for your turn to speak? By paying full attention to what the other person is saying, you're practicing mindfulness. You're not reacting impulsively, but rather you're responding thoughtfully and constructively. This simple act can go a long way in improving your relationships and reducing stress. The same applies when you're eating. Rather than mindlessly munching away, try to savor each bite. Notice the texture, the taste, the aroma. By doing so, you're not only enhancing your dining experience, but also promoting better digestion and preventing overeating. Mindfulness can also be practiced during routine activities like washing dishes, brushing your teeth, or even walking. Instead of letting your mind wander, focus on the sensation of the water on your hands, the bristles against your gums, or the ground under your feet. This can bring a sense of peace and calm, making you less reactive to external circumstances. Chapter 5 
Developing Self-Awareness Skills Building upon the practice of mindfulness, developing self-awareness skills becomes an integral part of managing reactions and cultivating a more balanced life. It's about becoming the observer of your own thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. This self-observation isn't about judgment or criticism. It's rather a gentle and compassionate inquiry into one's own inner workings. When you practice self-awareness, you start to notice patterns. Maybe you react sharply when you're tired, or perhaps you're more anxious when you're hungry. These are windows into your behavior, opportunities to understand your triggers, and to cultivate a more balanced response. It's not about suppressing your reactions, but about learning to navigate them more effectively. Developing self-awareness also means acknowledging your strengths and weaknesses. It requires honesty and courage to face your limitations. Yet it's through this acknowledgement that you can begin to make changes to grow and to develop a more balanced and satisfying life. Developing self-awareness is a skill, and like any skill, it takes practice. It's a journey of self-discovery that can be challenging, but also incredibly rewarding. Sometimes, having an objective and empathetic listener, like a counselor or a coach, can provide valuable insights and guidance. Traversing the sea of emotions, labeling and accepting them, becomes a crucial step in managing reactions. It's not just about identifying your emotions, but also acknowledging them, even the uncomfortable ones. This process allows you to understand your emotional patterns and their triggers, thereby gaining control over your reactions. The first thing to do is to recognize your emotions as they come. Are you feeling angry, sad, frustrated, or anxious? Don't shy away from these feelings. Instead, name them, say them out loud, or jot them down. This act of labeling creates a psychological distance between you and the emotion, enabling you to observe it rather than being consumed by it. Acceptance follows labeling. Acceptance, though, doesn't mean resignation or complacency. Rather, it's about acknowledging that these emotions are part of you and they have a purpose. They're signals telling you something about your environment, your situation, or your inner state. Recognizing that your emotions, even the negative ones, are there for a valid reason helps you to accept them. Remember, accepting your emotions doesn't mean you have to act on them. You're allowed to feel angry without lashing out to feel sad without sinking into despair. Acceptance simply provides the clarity to understand these feelings, lessening the power they've over your reactions. Labeling and accepting emotions is a skill that takes practice. But with time and patience, you'll find that this process can lead to profound personal growth and improved emotional control. It's a pivotal step in harnessing the power of not reacting. Chapter 6 Reframing Negative Thoughts After mastering the art of labeling and accepting emotions, it's time to tackle another essential skill reframing your negative thoughts. This mental exercise requires you to consciously choose a positive or neutral interpretation over a negative one. It's about transforming your perspective to see situations from a different, more empowering angle. Consider this you're stuck in traffic and you're late for a meeting. The frustration surges, and you think, this always happens to me. Why do I have such bad luck? This is a negative thought process that can spiral out of control, leading to heightened stress and anxiety. However, by reframing, you might think instead, this traffic gives me time to relax and listen to my favorite podcast before the meeting. Reframing isn't about denying reality or avoiding negativity. It's about widening your viewpoint, Acknowledging the existence of different perspectives and choosing the one that serves you best. Negativity can limit your potential and rob you of the joy in your life. By reframing, you're not only changing your thoughts but also your emotional response to situations. Often, the world isn't as you see it but as you interpret it. Reframing provides a way to shift that interpretation to a more positive or neutral one, which can be incredibly liberating. It's about controlling what you can your thoughts and emotions and letting go of what you can't. This is the true power of not reacting, and it's a skill that can profoundly improve your emotional well-being. 
Chapter 7 Practicing Empathy and Compassion While mastering the art of reframing your negative thoughts gives you control over your emotions, practicing empathy and compassion allows you to extend that control in understanding and responding to the emotions of others. These twin virtues, empathy and compassion, are the gateways to emotional intelligence, enabling you to connect with others on a deeper level. Empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others, isn't an innate skill. It's something you can develop, like a muscle. Start by actively listening. When someone shares their feelings, don't just hear the words. Listen for the emotions behind them. Validate those emotions, even if you wouldn't feel the same way in that situation. Remember, it's not about you, it's about them. Compassion, on the other hand, goes a step further. It's not just understanding someone's pain, but wanting to alleviate it. To cultivate compassion, try to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Imagine what it's like to be them, to feel their pain, their joy, their frustration. It's essential to remember that practicing empathy and compassion doesn't mean you're responsible for fixing others' emotions. Your role is to understand, validate, and share in their emotional experience. This practice can help you respond rather than react to emotional situations, giving you greater control over your own emotions and interactions. Chapter 8. Taking Responsibility for Reactions In your journey towards emotional intelligence, owning your reactions is a critical step as it empowers you to manage not just your emotions, but also the way you express them. Recognizing that you're the one in control of your reactions not the situation or the person who might have triggered them, is key to developing emotional stability. This is a vital necessity, but it's a journey worth taking. Think about your usual reactions to different situations. Are they truly serving you? Often we react impulsively, driven by instinct or habit, without considering whether our response is beneficial or destructive. You have the power to change this. By acknowledging that your reactions are your responsibility, you can begin to choose responses that align with your values and goals. This doesn't mean suppressing your emotions. It's about understanding them, processing them, and then deciding how best to express them. It's about learning to pause before reacting, creating a gap where choice resides. This pause allows you to respond rather than react, to choose understanding over judgment and patience over frustration. Taking responsibility for your reactions also involves accepting the consequences of your actions. If your reactions have caused harm, making amends is crucial, and making amends where possible. This not only helps to mend relationships, but also reinforces your commitment to self-improvement. Chapter 9. Building Emotional Resilience Building emotional resilience, your armor against life's challenges, requires a deep understanding of your emotions and a commitment to navigate through them rather than around. It's about developing a robust emotional immune system that can withstand stress, adversity, and hardship. The ability to bounce back and recover from emotional setbacks is vital for maintaining your mental health and overall well-being. Firstly, Let's recognize that emotional resilience isn't about avoiding or suppressing your feelings. On the contrary, it's about acknowledging them, understanding their origins, and learning how to manage them effectively. You can't control the waves, but you can learn how to surf. Secondly, emotional resilience is about flexibility and adaptability. Life doesn't always go as planned, and that's okay. It's how you react to these unexpected changes that matters. Can you adapt, adjust, and find a way to thrive, even when things don't go your way? Finally, building emotional resilience involves cultivating a positive mindset. This doesn't mean you have to be cheerful all the time. It means you're able to hold on to hope and optimism, even in the face of adversity. It's about focusing on what you can control, and letting go of what you can't. Chapter 10. Learning to forgive quickly. 
Another key strategy in bolstering your emotional resilience is learning to forgive quickly, a step that's often challenging yet incredibly liberating. It's not about dismissing the wrong or pretending it didn't hurt. It's about freeing yourself from the heavy burden of resentment and anger that weighs you down. When you hold on to grudges, you're not punishing the other person, you're punishing yourself. Your mind becomes a battleground of negative emotions, draining your energy and focus. But when you choose to forgive, you regain control. You're not forgiving for their sake, but for your own peace of mind. To master forgiveness, start by acknowledging the hurt. It's okay to feel wronged, it's a natural reaction. But don't let these feelings fester. Reflect on the situation objectively without letting emotions cloud your judgment. Ask yourself, is holding on to this grudge benefiting you in any way? Then, make a conscious decision to let go. It's not easy, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. Remind yourself that everyone makes mistakes, including you. Understanding this can make forgiveness feel less like a concession and more like a gift of kindness to yourself. Lastly, practice empathy. Try to see things from their perspective. This doesn't mean you're justifying their actions, but merely understanding them. This shift in perspective can be a powerful catalyst for forgiveness. Chapter 11. Letting go of ego and pride. Shedding the weight of your ego and pride can profoundly transform your emotional landscape, making you more receptive, empathetic, and resilient. Ego and pride often serve as a protective armor, defending against perceived threats and vulnerabilities. However, they can also become barriers, preventing you from acknowledging your mistakes and obstructing your ability to connect with others on a deeper level. Letting go of ego and pride isn't about denying your self-worth or potential. It's about establishing a healthier, more balanced perspective of yourself in relation to others. It's about recognizing that you're not always right, that you're not infallible, and that it's okay to be vulnerable and wrong sometimes. You're human, after all. Begin by becoming more self-aware. Notice when your ego or pride is taking control of your reactions. Are you defending yourself unnecessarily? Are you refusing to accept feedback or criticism? Are you insisting on having the last word? These are clear indicators that your ego and pride are in the driver's seat. Next, cultivate humility. Humility isn't about being meek or submissive, but about recognizing your place in the grand scheme of things. You're important, but so is everyone else. Your opinions matter, but so do others. Finally, practice empathy. Put yourself in others' shoes and try to understand their perspectives. This can help you become less defensive and more open to different viewpoints. Letting go of ego and pride is a continuous journey, not a one-time event. It requires patience, humility, and most importantly, a willingness to change. But the rewards improved relationships better self-control, and increased emotional intelligence make the effort worthwhile. Chapter 12. Cultivating Gratitude Daily. In your journey towards emotional tranquility, cultivating gratitude daily becomes an invaluable tool that can dramatically enhance your outlook on life. It's not just about saying thank you more often, it's about truly feeling thankful for the big and small things that make up your existence. This appreciation can create a buffer against negative emotions and reactions, helping you gain control over your emotional responses. Having gratitude doesn't mean ignoring the negative aspects of life. Instead, it's about finding a balance and acknowledging that even unpleasant experiences can hold valuable lessons. When you're faced with difficulties, try to find something you can be grateful for amidst the chaos. This shift in perspective can help you approach challenges with a more positive mindset, reducing the likelihood of knee-jerk emotional reactions. To cultivate gratitude, it's helpful to make it a daily practice. You might keep a gratitude journal where you jot down a few things each day that you're thankful for. 
Over time, you'll find that this practice helps you to start naturally noticing the positive aspects of your life. You're not just jotting down words, you're rewiring your brain to focus on the good instead of dwelling on the bad. Chapter 13. Improving Communication Skills Mastering the art of communication can substantially enhance your ability to maintain emotional balance and foster healthy relationships. This skill isn't innate, but it's something you can cultivate and refine over time. It requires a certain degree of self-awareness, empathy, and patience. Firstly, the cornerstone of effective communication lies in active listening. It's about truly hearing what the other person is saying, rather than just waiting for your turn to speak. This showcases respect and acknowledgement, which can pave the way for open and honest dialogue. Secondly, you should aim to express your feelings and ideas clearly and assertively, but never aggressively. This distinction is vital. Assertiveness involves standing up for your rights without violating others, while aggression disregards the feelings and needs of others. Your words carry weight, so choose them wisely. Furthermore, nonverbal communication can be just as, if not more, important as what you say. Your body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice send signals about your emotional state. Seek to verify that these align with your verbal messages. Finally, remember that communication isn't a one-off event. It's an ongoing process that needs regular practice. Be open to feedback and don't be afraid to admit when you're wrong. This shows maturity and a willingness to grow, which can strengthen your relationships and help you control your emotions more effectively. In the end, remember that improving your communication skills is a journey, not a destination. The more you practice, the better you'll get. So keep at it, and you'll reap the rewards in time. Chapter 14. De-escalating conflicts effectively. When conflicts arise, as they inevitably will, your ability to de-escalate the situation effectively can substantially impact the outcome. De-escalation isn't about winning or losing, it's about transforming a potentially volatile situation into a more manageable one. The first step is to remain calm. Easier said than done, right? However, your calmness can often influence the other person's emotions. Remember, emotions are contagious. If you stay composed, you're subtly encouraging the other person to match your emotional state. Next, listen attentively. It's easy to get lost in our own thoughts during a conflict, but try to focus on the other person's words. Show empathy, not judgment. By doing so, you validate their emotions and demonstrate your willingness to understand their perspective, which can help to cool the situation. Then use non-confrontational language. Avoid absolutes like always or never which can escalate tension. Instead, use I statements to express your feelings without blaming the other person. For instance, say I feel upset when instead of you always. Finally, suggest solutions. If the other party sees that you're committed to resolving the conflict rather than prolonging it, they're more likely to cooperate. Yet, it's essential to remember that the goal of de-escalation isn't necessarily to resolve the conflict right away, but to prevent it from escalating further. Mastering de-escalation techniques is a key part of harnessing the power of not reacting. Remember, it's not about suppressing your emotions, but effectively managing them to foster healthier interactions. Chapter 15. Setting Healthy Boundaries Traversing through life's complexities, it's essential for you to set healthy boundaries that respect your emotional, physical, and mental well-being. Setting boundaries isn't about building walls or shutting others out. Instead, it's about creating a space where you feel safe, valued, and understood. Imagine boundaries as invisible lines that you draw around yourself. These lines define your personal space and dictate how you allow others to treat you. They outline your values, expectations, and limits. When effectively set, these boundaries can bolster your self-esteem, freedom, and individuality. Developing these boundaries begins with self-awareness. You need to understand your feelings, needs, and values, 
It's about knowing what you can tolerate and accept and what makes you feel uncomfortable or stressed. Once you've identified these, communicate them assertively. Be clear, yet compassionate, and remember, it's okay to say no. It's also crucial to respect other people's boundaries. Understanding and accepting that others have their own limits fosters mutual respect and empathy. It's a two-way street. Setting boundaries can be hard, especially if you're not used to it. You might fear rejection or confrontation. But remember, setting boundaries is a sign of self-respect. It's about prioritizing your well-being over pleasing others. Chapter 16. Managing Stress and Anxiety While setting healthy boundaries is a key step towards self-care, learning to manage stress and anxiety also plays a vital role in maintaining your overall well-being. Stress and anxiety can be overwhelming, and if left unmanaged, they can lead to various physical and mental health issues. One effective way to manage stress and anxiety is through mindfulness. Mindfulness allows you to stay present in the moment, rather than dwelling on past regrets or future apprehensions. It's about recognizing your feelings without judgment and calmly acknowledging them instead of reacting impulsively. Healthy lifestyle choices can dramatically reduce stress and anxiety levels. Regular physical activity releases endorphins, the body's natural mood boosters. Proper nutrition fuels your body and mind, while adequate sleep provides the rest they need to function at their best. Mindset also plays an important role. It's often not the circumstances themselves that cause stress and anxiety, but your perception of them. By reframing negative thoughts into positive ones, you can dramatically reduce these feelings. Instead of viewing challenging situations as problems, see them as opportunities for growth. Lastly, don't hesitate to seek professional help if stress and anxiety become too overwhelming. Therapists and counselors are there to provide support and teach coping strategies. Remember, it's perfectly fine to ask for help, and it's a sign of strength, not weakness. Managing stress and anxiety is a journey, not a destination. It's about continuous learning and adapting. With these strategies, you're taking steps towards a healthier, happier you. Chapter 17. Developing Patience and Tolerance Often, you'll find that developing patience and tolerance is as essential to your well-being as managing stress and anxiety. These qualities aren't about suppressing your emotions, but about understanding them and choosing not to let them control you. It's about acknowledging that you can't control everything around you, but you can control how you react to it. Developing patience requires understanding that things take time. You can't rush personal growth, healing, or change. It's not just waiting, but actively understanding and accepting the time it takes for things to happen. That's where tolerance comes in. It's about accepting that not everything will go your way, and that's okay. It's about embracing the discomfort of the unknown and not letting it provoke you into impulsive reactions. How do you develop these qualities? Start by acknowledging your feelings. When you're feeling impatient or intolerant, don't ignore it or push it away. Instead, recognize it, label it, and analyze it. What's causing these feelings? Why are you reacting this way? This awareness is the first step towards developing patience and tolerance. Next, Practice mindfulness. When you're fully present in the moment, not dwelling on the past or worrying about the future, you'll find it easier to be patient and tolerant. Mindfulness helps you recognize that your feelings are temporary and that reacting impulsively won't help in the long run. Chapter 18. Practicing self-compassion regularly. In harnessing the power of not reacting, it's critical to practice self-compassion regularly. You need to understand that self-compassion isn't just about being kind to yourself, it's a vital element for emotional resilience and mental well-being. Embracing self-compassion is like opening a door to a healthier mental state, and practicing it regularly can fundamentally change how you perceive and deal with life's challenges. It's an act of understanding your emotions, acknowledging your pain and responding to it with kindness and care. 
It's about loving yourself, flaws and all. As you deepen your understanding of self-compassion, you'll find it's more than just being kind to yourself. It's about recognizing that suffering and personal inadequacy are part of the shared human experience. You're not alone in your struggles, and it's okay to be imperfect. When you're struggling, instead of criticizing yourself, try to offer the same comfort and understanding you'd give a close friend. That's practicing self-compassion. It's not about ignoring your feelings or suppressing your pain. It's about allowing yourself to feel these emotions and providing a safe space for them. By practicing self-compassion on a regular basis, you're not just being kind to yourself, you're fundamentally shaping a resilience that can help weather life's toughest storms. This isn't just an abstract concept, it's a powerful tool that you can use to better manage your emotions and reactions. When you're compassionate toward yourself, you're acknowledging that it's okay to be imperfect. You're allowing yourself to make mistakes without fear of harsh judgment. This can notably reduce stress levels and boost your overall well-being. Self-compassion also fosters a deeper emotional understanding. It aids in recognizing your emotions without letting them control you. You become more emotionally intelligent, able to discern what you're feeling without immediately reacting. Moreover, it helps in building a healthy relationship with yourself. It's important to remember that the relationship you have with yourself sets the tone for all other relationships in your life. In essence, practicing self-compassion not only helps you maintain a balanced emotional state, but also enhances your ability to handle life's ups and downs. It's a powerful tool that, when used regularly, can provide substantial benefits in your journey toward emotional mastery. To cultivate a regular practice of self-compassion, you'll need to consciously integrate mindful habits into your daily life that nurture kindness towards yourself. Start by setting aside a few minutes each day to reflect on your thoughts and feelings. Recognize your imperfections and mistakes as inherent aspects of being human. It's okay to stumble what's important is your resilience to get back up. Next, practice self-kindness. Speak to yourself as you'd to a dear friend. Replace harsh self-criticism with understanding and encouragement. Remember, it's all right to feel pain or discomfort. These emotions are part of life, and they don't define your worth or capabilities. Lastly, maintain a balanced perspective. Don't blow things out of proportion or belittle your own feelings. Acknowledge your emotions without judgment and let them pass naturally. Cultivating self-compassion isn't about ignoring your struggles, but rather about providing yourself the understanding and patience you need to navigate them. Practicing self-compassion regularly is like honing a skill. It takes time and persistence, but the rewards are immense. So be patient with yourself. Over time, you'll notice a significant shift in your emotional resilience and overall well-being. Chapter 19 Overcoming Past Emotional Trauma You may have emotional baggage that's been tucked away, but it's crucial to confront this to truly harness the power of not reacting. This doesn't mean letting these past traumas consume you. Instead, it's about understanding them, controlling your emotional responses to them, and ultimately healing. Unraveling the tightly wound threads of past emotional trauma can feel like a formidable task, but it's an essential step in the journey towards healing and self-discovery. It's not about digging up old wounds for the sake of it, but rather to understand the impact they've had on your emotional responses. You're not your past, but your past can influence you. Understanding this is key in unpacking your emotional baggage. Start by acknowledging that your emotions are valid and it's okay to feel the way you do. Your feelings are real and they matter. Then, identify the sources of your emotions. Whether it's a past relationship, family issues, or a traumatic event, pinning down the root cause is an important part of the process. Harnessing the power of emotional control, it's possible to overcome the shadows of past trauma turning them into stepping stones towards a stronger, healthier you. 
This isn't an overnight process. It requires patience, self-awareness, and a firm commitment to healing. Your first step is to acknowledge your past traumas. Don't push them away or bury them deep down. Face them head on, understand the pain they've caused, and accept that they've shaped you. Next, work on reframing your thoughts. It's easy to let past hurts define you, but remember, you're not a product of your suffering. You're much more than that. Start by recognizing this fact and slowly, you'll begin to see yourself in a new light. Finally, practice emotional regulation. This means not reacting instantly to emotional triggers. Instead, take a step back, breathe, and analyze your feelings before responding. This pause allows you to choose how to react instead of being controlled by your emotions. Healing through emotional control is a journey, not a destination. It's about growing, changing, and becoming the best version of yourself. Remember, you're not alone in this process. You've got the power to control your emotions and heal from your past. Chapter 20. Embracing Imperfections and Mistakes You're not alone in your struggle to accept personal flaws and overcome the fear of failure. It's a shared human experience, a journey marked by the courage to confront our imperfections and mistakes instead of reacting impulsively or defensively. Embracing these aspects of ourselves, rather than pushing them away, empowers us to grow, learn and move forward with resilience and grace. Recognizing and accepting your personal flaws isn't only a pivotal step towards self-improvement, but it's also a powerful way to enhance your resilience in the face of life's challenges. We all have imperfections, and that's okay. You're not alone in this journey of self-discovery and acceptance. It's a universal human experience. These flaws don't define you, but how you handle them can. By accepting your flaws, you're acknowledging that you're a work in progress, and that's perfectly fine. You're allowing yourself to be human, to make mistakes, and to learn from them. It's a liberating feeling that fosters personal growth, resilience, and emotional stability. By accepting your flaws, you're acknowledging that you're a work in progress, and that's perfectly fine. You're allowing yourself to be human, to make mistakes, and to learn from them. However, acceptance isn't about complacency. It's not an excuse to stop pursuing improvement. It's about understanding your weaknesses without judgment or self-criticism and using this awareness to navigate your life more effectively. Let's face it, nobody's perfect and everyone fails at some point, but it's how you bounce back from these setbacks that truly defines your strength and character. Overcoming the fear of failure begins with acknowledging that it's okay to stumble. It's a fundamental part of learning and growing. Your fear of failure might stem from a deep-seated need for perfection. Remember, imperfection doesn't equate to inadequacy. It's a sign of being human. Instead of dreading mistakes, view them as stepping stones to self-improvement. This mindset shift can disarm the fear, allowing you to approach tasks with a newfound resilience. When you do fail, don't wallow in self-pity or let regret consume you. Reflect on what went wrong, extract the lessons, and then let go. You're not defined by your failures, but by how you react to them. Embrace your imperfections and mistakes. They're not signs of weakness, but evidence of your courage to step out of your comfort zone. By overcoming your fear of failure, you're one step closer to mastering the power of not reacting. You're learning to control your emotions, paving the way for a calmer, more balanced life. Chapter 21. Developing a Growth Mindset. In your journey to master the power of not reacting, developing a growth mindset is a critical step. It's about understanding this mindset, nurturing emotional resilience, and putting it into practice. Let's explore this together and see how it can reshape your reactions and interactions. While it may seem challenging at first, embracing a growth mindset can substantially enhance your personal and professional development, fostering resilience and a positive outlook towards learning and growth. 
It's about believing that your abilities can be developed through dedication, hard work, and yes, even failure. It's a concept that shifts your focus from the endpoint to the journey, from the grade to the learning process, from perfection to progress. You'll find that having a growth mindset encourages you to view challenges as opportunities instead of threats. It's not about avoiding difficulties, but rather seeing them as stepping stones towards improvement. It's about being open to feedback and criticism, not as a dismissal of your worth, but as valuable insights for your development. Understanding a growth mindset also means recognizing that effort is key to success. It's not just about talent or intelligence, but the determination to keep going even when things get tough. It's about persisting in the face of setbacks, knowing that they're part of the journey to mastery. Embrace this mindset, and you're already on your way to developing better emotional control. Building emotional resilience goes hand in hand with adopting a growth mindset, offering you the strength to navigate life's challenges with grace and adaptability. It's not about ignoring your feelings or pretending everything is fine. Instead, resilience is about acknowledging your emotions, understanding them, and allowing them to pass without letting them control you. Cultivating resilience begins with self-awareness. By recognizing and acknowledging your emotional reactions, you're taking the first step towards controlling them. It's okay to feel upset, angry, or anxious. These emotions are part of being human. Next, practice self-compassion. Understand that it's okay to make mistakes and have bad days. These experiences don't define who you are. They're merely stepping stones in your journey of growth and self-improvement. Lastly, maintain a positive outlook. Even when faced with adversity, endeavor to find the silver lining. Remember, challenges are opportunities for growth. They help you become stronger, wiser, and more resilient. To truly harness the power of a growth mindset, you need to apply it in your daily life, embracing challenges as opportunities for self-improvement and learning. Start by recognizing that setbacks aren't failures, but lessons. Every time you stumble, you're given a chance to grow, to better understand yourself and the world around you. Cultivate curiosity. Be open to new experiences and welcome different perspectives. When you approach situations with an inquisitive mind, it's easier to see possibilities rather than obstacles. Remember, your intelligence and abilities aren't fixed. They're capable of growth. You're not stuck where you are. With effort, perseverance, and a positive attitude, you can learn and improve. Don't shy away from constructive criticism. It's not a personal attack, but a tool for growth. Embrace it, learn from it, and use it to propel yourself forward. Applying a growth mindset involves constant practice and patience, but the rewards are worth it. You'll gain better emotional control, become more resilient, and open doors to self-improvement and personal success. The power of not reacting lies within you, and it's time to tap into it. Chapter 22. Maintaining Emotional Balance Mastering your emotions allows you to create a stable emotional balance, which isn't only beneficial for your mental health, but also pivotal in the art of not reacting impulsively. This sense of equilibrium allows you to respond, not react, to life's many challenges. It's like being the calm eye at the center of a storm, impervious to the chaos whirling around you. To achieve this balance, you must first understand your emotional triggers, what situations or people provoke intense reactions in you. Once you've identified these, you can work on strategies to manage them. This might involve distancing yourself from certain environments, or it could require more in-depth psychological work. Next, practice mindfulness. Stay present and focus on the here and now. This helps you avoid dwelling on past regrets or future worries, which can easily tip your emotional scale. Remember, you can't control everything around you, but you can control your reaction to them. Additionally, self-care is vital. Eating healthily, getting enough sleep, and regular exercise can stabilize your mood 
and increase your emotional resilience. Remember, your physical well-being greatly influences your emotional state. Lastly, don't suppress your emotions. Allow yourself to feel and express your emotions in healthy ways. Bottling up feelings can lead to an emotional explosion later on. It's about controlling, not repressing your emotions. Maintaining an emotional balance isn't about avoiding emotions, but rather managing them. It's a journey, not a destination, and it's completely within your grasp. With practice and patience, you can master this skill and harness the power of not reacting impulsively. To master the power of not reacting, it's vital to understand your emotional triggers and learn to pause before responding. Like a knight in shining armor, equip yourself with deep breathing techniques, a growth mindset, and an understanding of your own imperfections. Remember, you're the master of your emotions, not the other way around. So, take charge, cultivate gratitude, and stride into a future where your emotional balance reigns supreme. Thanks for listening to or reading this from Audiobooks Office.